preaching, when he was preaching, I was like, does he know my story? Is it that the message was uh, packaged for me today? Because I saw my situation, I saw my life. Like when he was preaching, I was telling my friend that that is me. You see the way he says something, I'm like, that is what I wanted to say. And I thank God because this moment I'm alive. And um, I have two testimonies. One is about my health. I have struggled with my health for quite a number of years that uh, sometimes people may not know what I go through. But I thank God that he has provided all the medications I need for all this time. Two weeks ago, I received my treatment in Karen. And uh, when I got the drugs, I was like, I don't pay anything to get my medication from Geneva to Kenya. And then my, co my colleagues organized and tell me, somebody has flown into Geneva, would you want to get treatment? And God has given me favor to the hospital in Geneva, my doctors, the nurses in the department, that when I drop an email, they're very fast. We have your package for six months. And so I thank God because even as I continue going and trusting God for complete healing and perfection, he has not left me behind. He remembers me and provides to me. And then, and then this week, and another friend calls me and tells me, I have a ticket, I'm coming to Kenya next week. Would you need uh, oral medications? And I said, I thought maybe she would feel tired because she's the one who picked the injections, packaged and sent them over. And she said, I'm coming over. Just get a prescription, the current one from the doctor, and I'm buying the medications for you. And I thank God because Mama prayed for me one Wednesday, and uh, I had a surgery in the head. And there's a place that there was like a vacuum for years, and uh, she said she wanted to see my report. So when I went to Mombasa for my reports, the MRI was done like <coughs> four times. Because the radiologist is the one who's done my MRI since, I think, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So she was wondering whether the machine has a problem. And she repeated it four times. And uh, the doctors didn't know what to say. They told me we're having a meeting about your case and we'll give you a feedback. So I was delayed in the hospital for another one day. So when they came, they said, we have booked another physician for you because we, feel, we see even the hall that was there after the surgery is completely full. Like. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. And they did not understand why I should continue even taking the injections I'm on. So then they, they, they gave me another physician who when I went to see the physician, he even did not gain what to do. He said, when I look at your results, I cannot understand because we don't see the tumor that was left. We don't see the hole. Everything is complete like normal. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he said, maybe we can send you back to Geneva. Your doctors in Geneva can tell us what to do. So then when I signed for my treatment, the nurse wrote an email and said, uh, by the way, your doctor wants to see your current report. So when I sent my report, the doctor said, perfect. I'm happy that everything is normal. She didn't say, like, stop the medication or anything. And I think God has taken over my health all through. Amen. And, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and to add on this, my connection with, was with Mama was because of my health. That God really revealed to her that there's somebody who needs to be prayed about her health. So I know I'm here and she's here for my health and for my full life. I thank God for that. I don't take it for granted. Uh, my second testimony is about uh, victory that God has given me. When um, Papa was preaching, I was looking at my story. I've had a, court in, um, a case in court, and not a, a case that I've, I've wronged somebody or I've done anything wrong. It's a case because I was blessed with an opportunity overseas. And people woke up and felt this one does not have to go overseas to work. And they conspired. The, the, it was a conspiracy. They got lawyers. They contributed money. They paid. So I was taken to court. Reason number one, you work overseas. That's a crime. Reason number two, you move from country to country. You go for holidays. I mean, I do, could not understand. And um, the first case, I won and I represent myself. They, Amen. 
Amen. They appealed again. And when they appealed, I won again, representing myself. And then they went to the high court. They did an appeal in the high court. Now, I try, I, because there's a time I was in Kenya for about three, four months, and I had to get a lawyer because I was not able to attend the court sessions when I'm at work. So this lawyer got like business out of me, and he thought he would charge me in uh, a currency that is not Kenyan shillings. And it was of exaggerated. So I decided I'll not pay. And uh, at some point, I tell mama, I think I don't need to pay for this. Sometimes she tells me, do this. But again, I disobey. <laughs> because I don't see why I should pay somebody a lot of money for something that is really, for me, I believe in truth. And I believe if I just tell the truth, go with it or refuse. And I have a strong personality that you can come a thousand people, but when I know I'm standing right alone, I'll not be shaken. So I stood by it, and um, I think they got the best advocate. Because when I went, I talked to another, the children's court lawyer. He told me, uh, get somebody maybe to represent you. But she was confident and told me, your case is clear. You should not be shaken. So when I talked to somebody and he told me, the, the best advocate I would give you in Mombasa is the one they're using. So I don't know. So he talked to another lady and said, could you be comfortable to have a client against this advocate? He said, fine. But I looked at the manipulation and they could call each other. And then I was like, what if they play me games? So I stood alone. And at some point, the, the, the way they write the submissions, they would say, this and this case, the person represented themselves and it was dismissed. And I say, like, must I have an advocate, a human being? Because for me, I knew I have an advocate, Jesus, with me. And every time I was in court, the judge would ask, um, Beverly is representing me. I say, I'm representing myself. And I, it doesn't matter if everyone comes in and says, I'm here so and so uh, for the appellant or for the respondent. Me, I stand, I say, Beverly, the respondent, I'm representing myself. And um, for some time, the judgment was delayed for reasons I don't understand. And it kind of disturbed me because if your judgment is scheduled on certain date and nothing happens, you talk around, you call. I, like for the last three months, I've been attending court on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you can imagine you log into a court procession uh, from maybe nine to midday, sometimes to four, and your case is not mentioned. And every time I raise my hand, the judge says, Oh, Beverly, I have your file here. I'll deal with it. Oh, Beverly, come on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I'm there. He's like, I'm sorry. Then some two weeks ago, I just told him, I need to move, up, move forward with this case. I don't know why every time you're telling me that you have to, you have to. So he said, okay, I'll deal with it. So on Wednesday, he says, I have your judgment. But uh, the other advocate is not in. So can, I'll organize on Friday. So on Friday, it was, it was strange to me that um, he called my file. And for your case to be listed, that ruling has been done. So for me, he called my file. The advocate was not there. And then when the advocate came, he delayed like, to make sure that it's me, him, and the advocate. Then the thing he told us was that um, I wanted to have the two of you so that I can ask for more time to make a ruling. Then I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> if, if you have to list my case, it is, the ruling is there. What is difficult for you not just to, to talk what should be said? So he said, give me up to Tuesday. On Tuesday, I didn't bother. And then the advocate looked for me for the first time. And he said, the, ju the judge wants us to be online at one. I was there at one up to about three. And I told him, I can't wait here. He said, you can do your things. If he comes, I'll give you a call. So on Wednesday, I was there. And uh, the judge just looked at everything and said, uh, I'm sorry, he told the advocate, I'm sorry, Mr. So-and-so. Uh, your application did not go through. It is dismissed. And, and Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, 
That is how when Papa was preaching, I was saying that we, had, we have an advocate. That when we know the God we serve, that when we know the faith we hold on, we are not shaken. People may come, conspiracy may be done, multitudes may work out. But the moment you know the God you serve, you stand tall and you know that however years it will take, however long it will take, your victory will come. So I'm here to celebrate the victory of God. And actually this month, the Lord has given me rest. Amen. Amen.